measuring tape we know that the distance on the very first wall we're working with is six feet so what we've got to figure out is where the two by fours in the framing or the floor joists go underneath the shed because if you're going to use this method with the concrete or the cinder blocks you want to make sure that you've got support under those blocks and a, a word wise if you have a really tall shed or you want to go all the way up to the ceiling you really have to be careful because you can't put that many bricks on top so we want to keep it safe, whatever we do. To start, what we've done, if we, we have pretty much emptied out the majority of the shed. There's a few items that were really heavy, and it was hard for us to pick up and move. And since we knew we were just going to bring them back in, we've left them on this area of the shed. Now I'm going to show you what was um, taken out. It's, the majority of it is boxed and crates and things, so we know what we've got to bring back in, what needs to go on a shelf, but we've also got some items that are just really big that are not shelf doable. So what we're going to do in this particular shed, this is the 10 by 12, we're going to leave one wall blank and we're going to put some hooks up over there to just store the bigger things and things of that nature. So we're actually going to do this wall first. Once we get this wall done, then we can bring some of these heavy items and we can kind of move them out of our way. But we've kind of got our slate as clean as we could possibly get it. So I'm going to show you what is out in the yard and what we took out and kind of show you some of the sizes and things that we're working with. Okay, as you can see, we have a lot of totes. There's a cooler, there's some, uh, a small step ladder. Time to organize what you have. The things that you don't want to store, you sort them as you're going back in, only put the necessary things in. And my recommendation is if you have something in your shed that you haven't touched in five or six years, a great time to recycle it, reuse, and just not toss it. Try to find someone who needs it or donate it somewhere. Let's be good to the environment. Okay, the first thing we did, and uh, just a kind of a word to, uh, warning, for you guys, if you try to come in and do everything exact, then what you're going to find out is you've got these odd men sized totes or containers, and you want to make sure you have holes for everything so everything is nicely put away. So we measured it, and we know that we have a floor joist coming here, so we've supported the concrete blocks on that floor joist, the same as here. Now, this is these are 10 foot boards on this section, so it's a 2 by 6 by 10 because we want good stability. When we set these down, you don't want to go all the way to the wall. You want to come out and leave a clearance. And what we've left here is approximately five inches. So we know that one tote, and what we did was we picked a tote. The one on the bottom is actually taller than a lot of the other totes are. And some of the totes don't have lids because it, you just can't put them there. So we've kind of measured out what we can do, and so we can feasibly put two totes this way and have another storage hole here. So you can't always have exact size holes. You need to accommodate what you're bringing back in. So we're just going to go little by little, look around, take the biggest things and the things with the most weight you want on the bottom. So you want to make sure that you're not putting a really heavy tote on the top of it. Okay, this is our second shelf, uh, our second shed. This is the 10 by 16. And what we are trying to think of before we get any farther is we have tall items that just need almost a bare wall so we can put some hooks up and hang some of this stuff from. 
So what we're going to start doing is pulling the things out from here that belong to Christmas and taking them to the other storage room. We're very blessed to have two sheds. That's a given. Um, but some of you are probably only going to have one shed. So these are things that once you pull it out and you start seeing what you've got, seeing the lengths of things that you do, that you have, that you need to deal with, kind of if you build it as you go. So I'm just giving you kind of a layout of what we're doing. So if you build it as you go, you'll be able to accommodate some of these longer, skinnier things that just take odd spaces. We've got two bicycles that we need to hang up. We do have bicycle hooks for those, but we're gonna need a bare wall to hang them. And we've got a shelving unit we're gonna pop up there. And then we also have up above the rafters. So this is an area that we want to utilize. We wanna use as much space as we possibly can. Now we have a light fixture there, so we need to be really careful of the electrical wiring that comes down to that box. But we can take some of the long skinny stuff and run it up above the rafter. So we're trying to utilize every inch of space that we can use. Okay guys, this is the 10 by 12 shed. And what we've done is we've used some eight foot board, um, 10 foot boards on this side. So she's got different lengths. This shelf is a little bit higher. This one isn't as quite as deep as the bottom one, but that gives her plenty of high space to put the heavy items that she doesn't want to put up on the shelf. Now you kind of see the weight that we've got going here, so it's really important when you do this to make sure that your blocks are on the, the floor joist so it can support that weight. But she's got some different sized angles and she's we put in um, shelving units on this side. See so if you can see it. They are uh, they're eight foot boards. So the same thing here. And what we were able to do as we went through this, a lot of stuff that she knew she was going to um, sell in a yard sale, we were able to kind of box that up for her so she can get to it. So she's got all of her Halloween decorations all in the same place. She's got her Easter there. And then on the back wall, she's got all of her Christmas together. Okay, this is the 10 by 16. Once again, in here, we used six uh, ten foot boards, and the reason we did ten foot boards with this also being a sixteen in width was it gave her the empty space at the very end to be able to hang her ladders, her shovels. So that is that empty wall there, and we've just got hooks and um, different uh, kind of hangers that she can actually put the um, the shovels and her brooms and all that. We've got her ladder back in the corner. So now if she wants to come in here and get something, she can see where everything is. And it makes it nice and convenient for her. Then in through here, we left it with a shallow wall uh, shelf. That way she can put her, her drill boxes and, and uh, things of that nature. Now, she had to order some siding for her house, and she had some left over, and it's about 14, 12 to 14 feet long. I'm not sure which, it might be 12. But the problem was is that there was nowhere to put it. It was staying on the floor, and she wanted to be able to walk around. So what we've done is we hung it up from the ceiling. And I actually should have showed you these brackets. Um, before I put them in, but I would say they're about six inches deep and they just screwed right into the wall. So that allowed us to get the siding out and have it stored without it being an inconvenience. That way, you know, if she needs it, let's hope she doesn't, but if she does, she's got it. We got some of these bicycle hooks. She has two bicycles and we're just going to hang those up above on that wall over there next to the blank wall. There, so we can just hang those up on the rafters there and the bikes can hang down in this area here. She's got some outdoor chairs that she will need to get to in the summertime if she wants to go to the pool. So she can actually get to that without any trouble. She has a solid wall here. So what she's got now is she's got this work table and then under it, we put some eight foot boards. So she's got a shelving unit underneath there. She's got her outlet here for her electric tools um, and just some things hanging around. 
Okay, and it's, it's actually getting a little bit dark in here, so I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this. But on this wall back here, we put just a, um, a utility hanger, and it's got some pegs. That way I could put her levels and her saws and have those out of the way so nobody gets hurt with those. And we added her a paper towel holder. Every good shop needs a paper towel holder. Instead of doing a solid shelving up here, we left this open in case she's working on something that has height. It gives her this much space in between. She's got a radio going now, her outlet, so I think she's going to get an electrician in and she's going to have some more floodlights put in. And, you know, so she's, she really has a lot of options now. So I was really thrilled with the way it turned out. We did two sheds. It took us one night. We went and uh, picked up some supplies. And then we started yesterday. So it was just a two-day project to pull everything out, get it organized, find out what we had, and anything that we could repurpose and reuse just to recycle things we did. One of the things when you were doing sheds and you're trying to lay it out, I've always found that you definitely need one blank wall for your tools and you need different size shelving units. Not everything is going to fit in the same manner. So we tried to give her a lot of different options on sizes and depths and she's got an open end down here. We used eight foot boards. This way she had this whole expansion to put something tall in that area. She has a kerosene heater inside and that kerosene heater would fit nicely right there out of the way until next time she needed to use it. So all in all, she really has a lot of space that she can now come in here when she wants to do a project. She wants to work on a wood project, make something for inside the house. You know, she's got some cold drinks out here. She's got some lights in, some electricity, and she's got an open space to design whatever it is that she's working on. So I was really pleased with the way it turned out. And I will put both sheds and roughly what we did, how many bricks we used, and then just kind of go from there. But do step back and say, let me see how many shovels, how many of everything that you need, because chances are you're going to need to leave at least a half of the wall um, with no shelving so you can hang all that stuff up. So, okay, guys, I hope this helps. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and check the description box. And I'll also leave you some links to a couple of things that we use that you may not can find in your hardware store. So be sure and check the description box. I hope you enjoyed the video, and remember, comment and hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You never know what you may learn on my channel. Okay, guys, until next time, be blessed.